Welcome to Dark Rangers Inc. and today I'm going to talk about a couple of ZWO's finest cameras, the 2600 MC Pro and the 2600 MM Pro. I'm going to go over a little bit of the difference between monochrome and color in general and maybe help you decide which is the right choice for you. Let me start by saying both of these are phenomenal cameras. If you're deciding which one to get, or maybe you've already bought one, you really can't go wrong. They have strengths and weaknesses, and in most cases the strengths of one is the weakness of the other and vice versa, and you're going to get amazing images and have an awesome experience no matter which route you go. So let's start off with some of the similarities. As you can see, they look almost identical because the housing pretty much is. They both have a USB hub in the back with 2.0 outs, two of them, so you can run your filter wheel or even your guiding system. They have a USB 3.0 in, but you can also run a 2.0 cable. It will work. And then a 12-volt uh, power supply in as well. Now, if you are running the ZWO ASI Air, do not try to power it with that. It will short out the port, and I know that from personal experience, so I can share that with you. They both have a 26 megapixel APS-C size sensor with the key difference, one being monochrome and one being in color. It is by Sony, the 571, and it produces a file size that's about 48 to 50 megabytes. They both have two-stage cooling and will let you get down to around negative 20 Celsius depending on the outside temperature. Here in Phoenix, if it is 110 degrees or 100 degrees even at night, it's pretty challenging and you're really going to stress it out, so I tend to run it either at zero or negative 10 in the summer months. The quantum efficiency of the 2600MC, the color version, is 80%, which is phenomenal. It's up there with some of the monochrome cameras and even above, like the 1600 some of the lower end uh, cameras by ZWO that are classics and considered very high quality. And the quantum efficiency on the uh, monochrome version is over 90%, which is absolutely crazy. They both have a full well depth of 50,000. And it's really good to use both of these at a gain of 100. You get a really big drop in read noise and a bump up in dynamic range. These are 16-bit cameras, so they have a ton of dynamic range and so you get a really nice color and uh, black and white gradient on them. It's very smooth and it just gives you a really nice result. Scheduled program, I am going to continue to go over the stats but I did want to jump in here because I reached out to the community on Facebook and the ZWO Facebook forum and asked if anybody had anything they wanted me to cover. I didn't think I'd get much of a response, but I actually did. Um, a lot of similarities, a lot of people wanting to know, is it worth it? Is it worth the upgrade? Is it that much better? The big thing though is on processing time. In some ways it is more challenging because you're dealing with three different channels that you then have to combine in pixel math. Uh, you usually have to tweak and stretch. I would say the word is finesse the colors out. Uh, a lot of times you'll get an image that just looks like it's totally green after you combine it. You think you're going to get this beautiful Hubble palette and you really have to play with it quite a bit. The Coldest Night website has a really good tutorial and gives you a lot of pixel math formulas. I'll include some here so that you can see that. And this is the one that I've been using along with a 4X and an HOO. So there's tools out there. And the cool thing about it, you know, to offset the challenge, like anything that's challenging, the reward is you have pretty much infinite flexibility. I mean, you can do an SHO formula in pixel math a million different ways. You can play with the ratios, the percentages, and so it's a whole rabbit hole to jump down. So while it is a challenge, you are rewarded with a lot more flexibility and customization, and so that's really cool. The other question was, is it worth reshooting objects that you've done in color? The answer overwhelmingly is yes. It's a ton of fun to do that. Uh, it's really cool to see what it looks like with a different color palette to see the faint nebulosity maybe that you wouldn't pick up with the color camera, just to be able to play with the different palettes. I've, I've shot the Rosette Nebula on like six different palettes now. It, that's totally worth it and probably one of my more favorite things to do. Is mono worth the extra expense and time? I think this, the answer is it depends. Are you somebody that is a little bit of a purist, a perfectionist, you want the best you can get, 
for your time, then absolutely it is. There is a significant enough result difference that you are going to say it was worth it. I didn't think there was. I thought the 2600 was so good. You know, with the quantum efficiency and the 16 bit and all the dynamic range it had, I'm like, surely this will be as good as like maybe the older 1600 or, you know, maybe a 533 monochrome camera. But mono is at a different level. I was totally not believer in that. And then when I started getting some of those first subs in, even though they were in black and white, you could just see it's so beautiful. It was the Horsehead Nebula. And I just remember being like, wow, this is truly incredible. It's absolutely worth it if it's worth it to you. If you're somebody that's just like, hey man, I like to go out, get these one shot color images. They look cool on Facebook and you know they makes you happy then that's cool too you can't go wrong either way to me it's 100 percent worth it and i know to a good chunk of the community it is so is it worth it is all subjective and if i could do it all over again i would have done it the exact way i did it i would have gone with the color camera first really become an expert at the craft and the hobby and get good at pics and sight in that and then switch to mono like i did and then people were just asking in general like if i haven't bought either and I'm thinking about color or mono, which one should I do? And again, that comes down to you. I mean, if you already have experience with one shot color, whether it's a DSLR or an existing Astro Cam, then I would say absolutely go for it. You're gonna have a lot more flexibility. The color palette's really cool and you can just create some amazing images. If you are newer to astrophotography or time is of the essence, especially if you're someone like me, I actually do go to dark sky sites and when I do go to that, I really like using the one shot color because then I can just hit one target all night and know I'm gonna get a good result and I don't have a lot of light pollution to deal with so I don't have to worry about as much of the noise and some of the other issues, I usually go on a new moon. If you know, you're, it really comes down to what your goal is. Do you want the absolute best image bar none no matter what? Are you in a heavy light polluted area? Are you experienced? Then yes, go with mono. Are you newer? Do you want simplicity? Do you still want a great image, but maybe with a little bit less time in post-processing? Then go one shot color. I mean, either way, you're gonna walk away with images that are gonna impress people and yourself, and you're gonna be blown away by what you get, because both of these cameras are phenomenal. So hopefully that helps. I know I basically, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, because I don't know what your situation is, I'm just gonna describe what I think the right camera is for the right type of person. You can then make the decision on who you are. You know, the other big thing too is if you're an ASI Air user, the live stacking, I don't believe really would work with mono. So if you like to do that and kind of see that image develop over the two hour time period, then you know, the, the options obviously pretty much made up for you. One shot color is the way to go. And then the other thing is, is just remember, you can always get the other one. So it's like, if you get one, you know, you can always save up your pennies over time. And if money's a little bit tight right now, then, and you still want to upgrade, go one shot color. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any more questions, please leave them below.